Okay, guys, I was thinking today, maybe uh, before we start, we can remind each other the way we want to make sure we're polite to each other, and then even maybe remind each other of what our personal goal is. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so how do we want to make, make, make sure we talk to each other? Well, let's, I think we've got to make sure that we uh, give each other time to talk and make sure we don't cut each other off. Sometimes when we get excited, we might mm -hmm. talk over somebody. So let's make sure we... Uh, so are we going to take turns? Are we going to go in rounds? Or are we just going to... I think we just wait for a pause. Okay. We've done that before. Okay. We kind of wait for a pause in the conversation. Yeah, and then maybe if someone hasn't talked, we can like invite that person to talk in more. Like with what do you think? Yeah, like yeah. Like maybe we should be mindful if someone <coughs> hasn't spoken. Okay. Yeah, I think we want to remember to try and use those. I think that's a good idea. I agree with Melanie. And it's really hard for me to not cut people off, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to use Miss Ronzetti's awesome idea about slant. I'm going to sit up and I'm going to listen and I'm going to nod my head and ask questions. I think cool. my goal will also be to listen more and not interject when I am so moved to say something um, based on hearing what somebody else has said. All right. Do you have a goal? Uh, well, mine was, mine was similar to not to not make sure I don't cut anybody off and make sure I I listen well. I agree with Mr. Stevens. I think that's a good goal for all of us. I'm also going to be mindful not to talk too much because I could just talk the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I like to listen, so I'm going to make sure I share one of my sticky notes. So okay, good. I would like to share one. Because, <clears throat> Melanie, I'd like to hear from you. I'm always interested in what you want to say. Oh, so, should we should we talk about the, um, this chapter um, called School? Yeah, you start, Whatever. Dave. Okay, cool. I, uh, I've been enjoying this book. I, I um, I can see a lot of similarities. I made a lot of personal connections with, uh, with my own life, uh, in this chapter called "School." When he was seven years old, um, just in the first page, this was on page thirty-seven. If you guys wanted to, to see, I made a personal connection that this reminded me of the first day of school when I went, and I was um, I was uh, I was actually scared, and my my mom actually I wasn't didn't let go of my mom, and uh, she actually had to kind of push me away. And, but I was so glad that she did because my because first day of school in kindergarten wasn't so bad, um, and I was glad that she did that. So, so sweet. But it really, it, I really made a personal connection there um, on that first page. I also made I also made a connection, but it was on page thirty-eight, and my connection was to my brother, and the reason I thought it, it really made a connection is first my brother is Jim. We call him Jimmy. And second, my brother Jimmy was always collecting skulls and things from nature, oh, cool. and later he became a science teacher, and so it was like I thought, oh, that sounds just like my brother, exactly. Well, that's right, because uh, Jimmy, he collects, he collects things from the, isn't that right? Is, he collects things like from the, the forest there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's yeah. a part. Do you know where that part is? Page. I think he brings something. Oh, he brought on page thirty-nine. He brought the wasp nest and the. He'd have a treasure, right? Every time that Ralph got off the bus. Oh yeah. I actually also made a connection to that part, um, more so from the standpoint of being the older brother and kind of exploring things and uh, figuring things out before the younger brother did. Um, also, I was pretty good at school and my brother wasn't, so even though my brother wasn't outside collecting rocks or sticks or whatever it is that Jimmy collects, he was certainly doing things that weren't necessarily school related. So I kind of made a connection to this scene as well. So, um, Mr. Stevens, you were the oldest? Of, yes. Oh, you're the oldest. I was the youngest, so it's interesting. I didn't know you were the oldest. I was the, the youngest, too. You're the youngest. See, and I have a connection because I have two younger brothers, oh. and they both they fit these profiles. Like I had one that was really did school well, and another one that did not do school so well. So that was really fun for me to see, to make that connection. Yeah. Um, I've been uh, with with Jason a lot when he teaches about different kinds of sentences. So I've, in my reading lately, I've noticed I've just been noticing them a lot because I've been hearing it a lot, and one I really liked because it made a big picture in my mind was at the top of 38 when he said finally the bus rumbled up huge and yellow oh. 
I, I just thought that maybe, I don't know, Jason, is that a complex sentence? I thought maybe that was a complex one, but it just really, I remember, because I lived on a dirt road, like, you would hear the bus, and then you'd see the dust, and then it would come up huge and yellow. It's not a complex sentence, but it, it does definitely help the reader develop the picture in his mind. And it uses the transition word. Oh, that's good. Finally. It's a pretty <laughs> sentence. Yeah. But I got excited, Ms. Ronzetti, because I picked the same sentence out as you. Oh, nice. And I like this sentence. Connection. It adds to my envisioning. Nice. Yeah. I thought it was a great sentence. I had a, um, can I jump in? Sure. Oh, I had a, I noticed that also on that page, see if I can find it on the top of page 38, um, why did Jimmy keep his hands at his side? Where, see, where does it say that? Um, okay, on the first paragraph, it said, Mom waved and flashed a big smile, but my brother kept both hands at his sides. I didn't quite understand why would he have kept his, both his oh, hands right. at yeah. his sides. I, I noticed that too. I was like, hmm. Maybe he's feeling sad because his brother is going away. To school, and yeah, he like doesn't I'm, get to go to school. Like he's kind of, pouting. kind of, kind of maybe pouting, or, mm. yeah. Rather than waving, he's kind of feeling like, you know, the mother waving and smiling, but he's not doing that. It's the opposite. Like, so that would make sense. Can I add? I think on the first, uh, at the first page, on page thirty-seven, they, Ralph Fletcher gives us some hints about this because his little brother's saying, "Why can't I come too?" Um, so maybe that his body language is helping us to see that, how he's feeling. Does anyone agree or disagree I with agree. that? I agree with that. I think that maybe um, if, I, if I'm to put myself in the position of his younger brother, I think that the act of waving kind of makes him going to school more final. Like, If I wave, then that means he actually is oh. going away. And oh, I'm wow. really going to miss him when he's not. It was a deep thought. Mm -hmm. I was the youngest and um, was very upset when my sister went to school. So I can imagine that uh, I cried a lot and was not cool with her going to school. I think it's interesting on page 39 how um, but I was the older than my sister and I was a little more protective of my sister and how he said, uh, you know, at the top, I knew Jimmy would be going to school soon and I was worried about him. I tried to get him ready. It's not like home, I said. You're going to have to follow rules or you'll get in trouble. And um, that that little part kind of made me think about also my younger sister. She kind of was kind of a little wild and stuff and I thought she needs to follow the rules. But it showed he was also caring and he was concerned. I think about him, you know, like, you know. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Um, I wrote a note about that. I think that he loves his little brother and he likes to take, kind of takes care of him. Mm -hmm. Seems to take care of little Jimmy. Uh, I grew up in a, in a similar situation with lots of uh, animals and lots of acreage. Um, so I really liked on page 41 the way. Um, the author, Ralph Fletcher, said in the first full paragraph, school is fine for a kid like me because I knew how to shut up and listen, which makes me sad as a teacher, though. I hope I hope our kids don't do that. But, but it seemed wrong to take an outside kid like Jimmy and lock him inside for six hours a day. It, that just made me think on so many levels of me as a, a little girl and then now me as a teacher and even as a parent, like, I wonder if my students feel like that. Yeah, I, I wonder too if maybe some of those kids who feel more at home outside, maybe for, feel more comfortable outside, they may they may feel locked up. But then, see, that's what I like at the end, because I said I like at the end when Ralph Fletcher says um, about the school, yeah, where did he say? Yeah, it wasn't fair, I told myself, that the woods would always be the place where Jimmy learned best. In that school, he would always be a straight A student. So here's the thing that that shows me is that Ralph Fletcher realized, you know, that his, his brother had special talents. He might not do well in school. Gosh, that makes me kill. <laughs> no, no, just because. <laughs> no, because it is true. Sometimes we don't value. And I was like, oh, 
And he's, it makes me want to ask Ralph Fletcher questions about Jimmy, because he's so much like making me think about my brother. And I'm wondering, what did Jimmy do as an adult? Did he, was he, did he become a science teacher like my brother, who was a crazy science teacher, <laughs> but had all these skeletons and things? So, You know, it's um, funny that I could tell, because of that sentence you just said, it was written by an adult, because um, he was so empathetic to this idea that he would be a straight-A student in his other place, because my sister was not like that when I was a kid. She was not empathetic to the idea. <laughs> and I don't think little kids are. I was just thinking the same thing. Like, <laughs> If my brother, when when he was doing whatever else he was doing, I was always thinking, you need to correct this behavior. We have to go to school. There is no other option. We don't care if you want to be a basketball player. You need to learn. Right. So that's kind of where I would have fit in if I were in this story. Yeah, he was very very young to be to be able to put himself in his brother's shoes like that and be empathetic, like you said, very young. Because that's not easy to do. What do you think, Melanie? Um, I had put an exclamation mark on my sticky note because for me as a teacher, I thought it was really important um, to recognize the differences in our students. And that's, I, I connected as a teacher more, uh, uh, more than when I was thinking about my brothers again. I was thinking of those teacher shoes of having students like Jimmy. And how do we help them like school yeah, yeah. and give them opportunities outside? So, um, so should we talk about what we'll do next? Uh, the next time we meet, what chapter we'll read? Yeah. And discuss. Can I say something that I I I I didn't do anything? That wait, who was the person? Who's the person you talked about the good sentence? Because I was thinking the way I can get to be a better writer is look at what writers write. And so I really liked how you found that really good sentence. You know that sentence I. I think maybe we should try everyone find that one sentence that or a, a little part where you think it, you could really envision it. I, you know I, what part? Do, I, I was thinking that, that too. That, like, I thought I wish I would have. I almost want to like talk about like you guys really kind of helped me see the book a little bit differently than I would because uh, so many of you are like the older sibling and I was getting that point of view. You, you showed me a different point of view. Um, so I thank you for that and um, I think it's going to be a good book club because of that. I think so too. But so yeah, we didn't make a plan. Though. Yeah, should we make a plan? Like um, next time we'll uh, we'll read, uh, we'll discuss the next chapter. Okay. Uh, well, the next chapter is very short. It's only it's only a page long. Yes. Oh, that's just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, but the one after that looks like it's. And we want to have something to talk about. Right. So how about right, we do, right. um, the next one starts on page 43. It's called First Pen. Mm -hmm. I guess when he gets his first pen in, it ends on page 50. So it's not too much reading, but then we'll have something to talk about. And um, how about that? So page 43 through 50, and we'll make sure that we all have read that and have some comments on that for the next time we get together. And so we talked about connections that we made this time. Um, a couple of us talked about um, sentences we'd like. I wonder if we... <laughs> I wonder if we could kind of read with the purpose of seeing how the character grows. Should we set a purpose or just kind of go with it? Sure, we could set a purpose. Um, let's see, he'll be he'll be one year older on that one. Uh, yeah, maybe we could just look for any any changes that we see in um, in Ralph or in any of the characters okay. from and, that year. And maybe look for good sentences. Okay. So, how characters may have changed in this next year. Uh, in the next chapter, and uh, any interesting sentences that stand out to us. Sound good? Mm -hmm. right. well, Thanks, good guys. Right. Everybody, did, everybody did their sticky notes. <laughs>